What a blessing being here. You know, you know, it, it, Peter was talking about us, our intellect and our this region and what it's like. And, you know, it's nothing wrong with being brilliant. And look at somebody and say, you need to shine. Uh, I always tell people I'm a lot more than just a pretty face. <laughs> but, but you have to know that Faith isn't that. That's what I want to say. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And I remember how brilliant I was in school. I ended up third in my graduating class in college at Texas A&M and just was a golden hair boy in the business world until I got diagnosed as having cancer on my optic nerve and lost my vision. And I remember when I had that diagnosis, I was at Herman Hospital in downtown Houston, and he left the room. The doctor left the room, and I said, Lord, don't let me think. See, that's what you have to do. You have to get to a place where your thoughts are not what's driving you. And it's really that simple. And you can be streetwise, and you still have to get to the place because that means you're at the top of understanding where you are out in the streets. But you still have to get to a place where you're not driven by your own understanding. And really, that's what Peter's talking about. That's what the prophetic helps you do, and that's, what, uh, that's why you have to hear the word of the Lord, because faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. Faith cometh. Everybody say it comes. Uh, you don't already have it, in other words. And yesterday's faith isn't enough for today. So it has to be renewed. And it's a daily. His mercy is there every day. His grace is there every day for you. And I remember the Lord, I said, Lord, don't let me think. I was sitting there. I was, it was in darkness because they had done so many tests on my eye. I, I'd lost my vision within three days. It was that radical. And uh, he, all of a sudden, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, uh, uh, this is for my glory. And all of a sudden, it lit up around the room with his voice, and uh, that was a t at a time I was really, we were really seeking the Lord, Pam and I. We were doing Shabbat every Friday night. Uh, this was back in the end of the 70s. That's how long we've been in all of what we've been in. And uh, we would meet with two other couples. We would do Shabbat. We would pray, and then we would paint. I'm an artist. A lot of people don't know that, so I used to paint a picture a week. And... Uh, uh, it was really what was unlocking a lot of the creative uh, energy that was in me that the Lord had put there. And uh, that night, I sat down and we started painting. I was painting this house out in a storm. Storm was coming. The house was out on a uh, jutted over um, uh, hill jutting out toward the sea. And I couldn't get the perspective of the house because I couldn't use but one eye. And see, that's what happens with us. You have to have right perspective to move forward. And so I just finally, out of, out of frustration, went and laid down on the couch and of uh, this couple's house that we were at. And Pam came over, and she said, what's wrong with you? I said, well, other than I'm, I I'm, uh, got a diagnosis of having cancer on my optic nerve, nothing. She said, yes, but what, what's the real problem here? And I said, well, she said, the Lord spoke to you. I said, the Lord said uh, it is for his glory. But when, I'd gone, when I went to the bathroom, the devil said, uh, you could die for his glory. And Pam said, you know, we really didn't come over here to talk about your problem. <laughs> She's such an interesting individual. 
She said, we came over here for you to do this painting. Why don't you get up and quit listening to the devil? She said, because that's bottom line what you're doing. You're letting the devil's voice rule what God said to you. And go finish the painting. This is the only painting that I, I, I don't have it. My brother has it. It's in his bathroom. And the house looks like this. And, it's, it, and it reminds me of how uh, in the midst of storm, uh, how even though we can't see clearly, God already has a way through the storm. Now, let me encourage you about that. That song earlier was so filled with faith. Kathy, it is so good to see you. I saw Pat. I saw Ruth Willard. It's so awesome to be up here with you. We just came from the international, global, uh, international uh, a globe gathering that was in Richmond, Virginia. I was honored. Dutch and I were honored to be speakers there this year. First time since 2004 we've both been there. So it was Really an awesome time, what God was saying and doing. And I knew that I needed to be here. Uh, I mean, you just know there are certain places you're supposed to be. And I really feel like when I was walking through the door, the Lord spoke to me. So at the end of this, I'm going to prophesy what's at your door. Because you had to walk through it to get in here, just like I did. And so you'll want to know what the Lord said to you. So let's look at some things. It's just an awesome season we have crossed over into. And uh, it's awesome to be aligned with Peter and Tricia Roselli. Let's thank God for them and this place. This particular work that is here king of kings now here's what you want to understand about uh this season this there's a whole new day breaking you're you're not in the same place you were uh a couple of weeks ago whether you think you are or not you're not and so what's happening is the church is shifting. A lot of people don't understand what it's like when all of a sudden God's ruling agent in the earth starts making a shift. Because the heavens were shifting last year, now we're starting to shift rapidly in our lives. You say, what do you mean the heavens were shifting? Well, why we've seen so much happening that were happening, including earthquakes and storms and the things that we keep seeing is because the heavens, Psalms 102 says, the heavens are removed like an old garment. And you have to watch what's going on in the heaven because it helps you tell time of what's happening. And I believe when that eclipse occurred, we entered a new era. Now, that's really how simple that is. We have shifted into a new era, and with it, we're in a kingdom season, and God is giving us an opportunity to get into a new triumphant spirit. That's why that song, I hope we sing it at the end again, I got to believe, I have to believe. Tell somebody I have to believe. And we're moving out of failure and loss. It's, that's probably what the woman was throwing up, up chucking, favor and loss. Uh, and you've got to get it out of you to move on in. Uh, we're going through the door of our future. You say, well, that sounds real interesting. Future means there's an expected place you've never gotten to. There's something that stirs in your hope, that liberates your faith, that you've never been able to get through into before. And that's happening right now. Something in you that's deep in that expectation. I heard Easter say this morning, even with when we were praying in the Spirit, go deep, bring it up, bring it out is very key now what you have to understand about faith also faith cometh by hearing faith is something that's coming to you you're going to hear something today and all of a sudden it's going to create a faith movement inside of you it's not it's it'll just stir in you you'll feel faith stirring it's not an emotion, it's an actual dynamic of spiritual force that stirs in you that creates 
and causes your emotions to come alive. And so you want to understand this faith dynamic, and it works in space and time. See, it's not out there floating around somewhere. We think faith is up there with God somewhere, and sometimes he looks. No, faith is, the Bible said he predetermined your time and place. Faith is here today, right now, this moment. There is an alignment between heaven and earth today that can produce faith in you. You can hear something today that starts moving your future forward. When I can't hear God, I do two things usually. I ask him what to give. He will always tell you. you, can, you you'll be able to hear him say, give. Now that might be forgive. Or it might be give this to this person. Or give your time this way. But you can hear him and then all of a sudden once you hear him, faith starts moving. The other thing I do, I go read uh, the seven churches in Revelation. One of them will apply to you. One of them will be where you're at right now. And so, and then all of those churches, he had some sort of dynamic that he said to them to get them moving again. So you can just remember that little dyna that little uh, key to get faith moving in you. Now, when we say time, we want to understand time. This is the season we're in that goes through 2019. Why you look at it from a Hebraic standpoint is because our covenant is a Hebrew covenant. See, we don't have a choice to look at it from an American perspective. Not if you're aligned through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have aligned yourself into a Hebrew covenant, and that's really the timetable you're on is God's timetable. So this 10 years look like this. Every year becomes a crossroad for you. And it's the number 70, which is linked with breaking captivity. That means there's a captivity in your bloodline that God wants broken out. I was thinking about what Tricia was saying about the last network they were in. Well, that sounded like my family. You know, they were tied up in things that the only way you got out sometimes were to be killed to get out of it. And so my whole last almost 50 years has been because God spoke to me and said, you can, I can restore all your losses, has been walking in a way to see that bloodline fully restored. And this past year, the Lord told me to do two things, which literally... Uh, and one of them, I, I, I'm yet not able to share publicly. I don't really know how to share it. I just know the voice of God. And he said, you'll have to do this to restore what was lost fully. And I can stand before you now. People say, you look better now than I've ever seen you. It's because I finished walking that out. And I can stand here and tell you, your bloodline can be restored. That's what I would love to get, at, just stand before the NFL right now. I don't have a problem with people expressing their hearts and emotion, but I, can, I would love for them to hear, you can be restored fully. There's not anything in your life that can't be restored. Or you can be a victim the rest of your life. That's up to you. If you want to remain a victim, if you want to demonstrate being a victim, you can be, or you can get in faith and come into restoration. And so that's the issue that we have because we all go through things, bad things, some of us worse than others, and yet there's the Lord. He can look at your brokenness. He can look at your bloodline. He can look at your race. He can look at your gender. And he can say, there ain't nothing I can't do. Here's the way he says it to me. Here's the way he says it to me. Find something I can't restore. Find something that happened in your life I can't forgive. 
Find something that somebody did to you that I can't give you grace to release them over. And I can't find anything. I can't find anything. Because I had a lot of stuff done. And a lot of bad stuff done. And listen, there, there's ways. Now, it might take you 50 years to get through it, but there's ways you can get through it. Now, now this is the year we're just ending. Let's look at this. Now, this season is linked with angels, and it's linked with apostolic alignment. Sending forth. That's part of the iron season. Now, we've just ended are coming, this really, now let me tell you how it works Hebraically, this really doesn't end, we think time linear, and it's really not, it's circular, this really doesn't make its full transition until April of next year, but this sword now should be in your hand, this is the way it looks, the sword should be in your hand, that seven was linked with. Seven is Zion, linked with a sword. And it is the sword of the Lord, which means authority. It means the word of God. It means your destiny. And it should be in your hand. And a, but it's not just a sword, it's a crown. And the crown, there should be a new favor on your head. Put your hand on someone's head next to you and say, I'm checking your crown out. Now, so last this past year was a war, and it will continue to be a war, but the war has shifted now. Everybody say, thank God. Thank God. Now, because we've been given and we're being equipped in a new way to go forth, all right? And the real war has been uh, about you transforming into your new identity. Very thing you were hearing this morning. Who are you going to be in next season? What are you going to look like? What are you going to express? Are you going to be like you've always been or your family's always been? Or are you going to express a new dimension of faith? See, that's really what it boils down to. And so now we're crossing over into this and I'm going to show you why as we move forward into the season ahead because what's happening is we all have a new personal responsibility now I usually speak corporately or territorially but I'm going to start today by saying there's something personal going on with each one of us right now there's something happening with each one of us that God is looking at because I the season is linked with God watching you. And he's very interested in each one of us individually. He's interested in our personal responsibility in this new season. And so what's happening is the familiarity of the past is ending. It has to end. It's a principle in the Word of God. What was familiar with you shifts. That means familial spirits. It means familiar bloodlines. See, let's go back to the way our nation looks like now. The sword is also linked with division. So I said this whole last year was going to be a year of division. I mean, all I've got to do is turn on the news. The whole... Everything looks like we're divided from our presidency and our choice of president down to now uh, our racial issues. It looks like the enemy's attempting to fully divide us. It's necessary because the Lord says there comes a time where division has to come. And without you being divided, soul and spirit, you can't see into your future right. And what amazes me how in this division, some are going into the past and others are seeing into the future. See, now that's the key. See, we have huge racial issues in the future. But it's not the same racial issues we had in the past. See? 
It's a total different war ahead. And if we try to operate in the faith that we saw exhibited in in the 60s, we're not going to break through into what we need to break through into the next decade. And so we've got to say, Lord, help us get our emotions separated right. Help us get things done. It, it, and, and some of you, you're in a place where you've got this emotional crisis going on in you, and you need to let the word of the Lord come down on it. If you don't, you're going to be held in last seasons. See, that's what happened to John the Baptist's disciples. They got held in last season because they didn't go on into the crisis of the next three years. Now, this is really important for us to understand. So what they did, only Philip and Andrew went into the next three years with Yeshua. They, all all the rest of John's disciples, went back and realigned. It says in Matthew 9, John's disciples and the Pharisees came. See, right now, there's, this is a year like that. It always comes at the end of a seventh year. You go one way or the other. Look at somebody and say, I know you can move through. Now, it's what happens with us. And so it becomes very important because here's what it looks like. This is where we are this year. Right now, the seven, that sword year that we've been in, is now gotten us up, has now gotten us to this gate of entry. And it's real easy this year. And in Hebrew, you start that right now at Rosh Hashanah, the seventh month, the seventh Hebrew month, because all sevens are dear to the Lord. So you're ending a seven, starting a seven, and that sword you have in your hand now should have you up to a new entryway. And that becomes very important to understand. You are even in your job. I don't mean you have to change jobs. I don't mean you have to do anything. But all of a sudden you start thinking differently over every case that comes into your uh, atmosphere or into your responsibility because you're entering a new way of thinking right now, saying, how do I move new in this situation? How do I make a shift? I don't want to go around that same old mountain again. Well, you know, some of us, we don't like exercise to start with. Some of us do not want to go back around the mountain again. See, some of us want to keep going forward to get forward. Now, let me show you what it looks like. Eight, which we are just turning into, is het, formed by combining these two letters in Hebrew, six and seven. Six was the year we stake claim on our future. We didn't have our future then, but we were staking claim on it. Seven is the year where the sword comes down and starts separating you out so you can get into the future and you're getting a new authority to go in. Now again, time in Hebrew concept is circular. So all of a sudden, if you didn't get this, you can catch up today. You're not hung because you didn't stake claim at six because all of a sudden God's putting it together for us to all make it through. That's what makes God a merciful God and a faithful God. He's not in time like we are. So he can go back to your messes two years ago, bring them right in front of you. You can get those reconciled so easily and then you're up to the gate. See, that's how God works. And so when these two letters come together and form this season ahead, it's called new. Everybody say new. New. And it looks like this. Go ahead, Chad. It looks totally like this. It's life. It means you've come up to this wall that you've come up to in other seasons But now you're going to find your way through it. 
Now, here's what makes Hebrew different. And this is what makes us prophetic. We've never been to this place before in history of the world. Never. We've never had iron het. See, we've never been in the 70th uh, uh, season and the 8th year. I I've been doing this since... I think the first time I ever wrote something on this and sent it out publicly was 30 years ago. So I've been doing it a long time, but I've never been to the place we are right now because I don't think we've ever been equipped to move through and into where we're going. We've never been in an apostolic season when eight occurred. It's been a thousand years, see? And so that's what makes it so different with this. This letter means all of a sudden you're up to this place where you couldn't get through in other seasons. God is not only showing you iron and watching after you, but he's going to show you how to get through. He's going to show you how to increase new and fresh. He's going to show you how to redo what you need to redo to move forward. See, that's what it really looks like. And eight is linked with covenant. The first time you see it displayed is with Noah. The second time you see it displayed fully it's where you see the Lord beginning to align and make covenant with Abraham. See, it's amazing what this year is about because you have to know your alignment. There is a new alignment coming for God's people. They have to feel aligned together. But it's also linked with Terah. It's a year of Terah. And you have to see Terah at the gate just as much as you have to see life abounding. Amen. And you have to be aware that Tara would love to stop life at the gate by taking control of the gate. All right? But here's the beauty of it. All the past seven years, God's been doing something in you. Look at somebody next to you and say, I know that was for you. I've watched him do something in you. I've watched him move you forward. And so really, this is what it looks like. Go ahead, Chad. It looks like, <clears throat> it looks like you are now up against a wall you might have been up against before, but you're finding your way through it. You might be at the end, and this might happen any, anywhere between now and April. You might be at the end of a season where you're at, and you say, I don't know where to go. God says, by faith today, no, I'll open it up for you. Yeah. See, that's what it's about. And, and you have to do faith acts. Now, this is what I call it. I call it something a little different. I call it our breakthrough portal. This year, if you don't remember anything else, you remember that you have a breakthrough portal waiting for you. No matter what you're doing, you need to say, you need to say these words out loud. Breakthrough portal. Breakthrough portal. You need to remember there is a breakthrough portal in every situation that confronts you this year. That's what really is the best way to describe this. And that portal is leading you in to the next three years. And the next three years are filled with great warfare, but you're equipped for it. See, the issue about warfare, I think, uh, it's an age-long warfare. You, you've got to just settle into that. But, what happens is, I think the enemy tries to convince us we're, and create fear in us that we're not equipped for the, for the warfare. If you're aligned properly, we'll, get, we'll help you get through the gate. Amen. See, that's why you're aligned. 
That's why you need to know who you're with, who, how you're praying, uh, how, who you can call when you need help. Because this year there is a breakthrough portal. Now, and so that becomes really important. Now, this is what it looks like. Let me give you some examples of it. Uh, uh, Revelations 4. Again, the Lord has just come down, visited John on Patmos Island, and he's shown him the seven churches in a region. Now, this year becomes a regional year. You have to look at the entire region for you to prosper where you are. You have to know who are you with in a region and apostolically moving with. And then he said, here's these seven churches. This is what they've done well, and we've all done something good. He said, this is what some of them have done wrong, but this is what all of them's going to have to do to overcome. Every one of them. There's something each one of us have to to hear God, to overcome, just like we heard that testimony, he felt like he got healed when he said, when he sang, whose report am I going to believe? Amen. See, there will be a moment, I'm going to show you in a moment, there's a moment. Yeah. Right. Right. And you want to always feel that moment uh, in the Lord. See, what, what's happening right here, I see it as I'm watching, God's coming down because we're in some moment here. And he's saying, I've got you this year. Look at somebody and say, the Lord's saying he's got you this year. Cool it. Look at him and say, cool it. He's got you this year. He'll bring you through. <laughs> but after you review the current situation you're in, the region, all of a sudden, John said he heard a sound like a trumpet. And then he heard a voice say, come up here. I'm going to show you things that are to come. That makes this now, seven was a prophetic year. Now, eight, as we're crossing into, is this gate that takes you beyond and into. Say, I'm going beyond. Now, that'll preach. I could preach, but I feel like I've got to stay focused right now to get this down in us. We are going beyond where we've been. We're going beyond what the way we've operated. We're going beyond into a new place. There's certain things you don't want to go with you. <clears throat> I wrote, uh, Peter Wagner will be dead in October. I wrote Doris a letter last uh, uh this past week before I left, and I said, listen, I have not felt like I was supposed to do a whole lot because I know the Lord too well, and I've been through death too many times. We're, for the first year, you need to grieve, step back, and perceive. Grieve, step back, and perceive. You need to look and see, where is this last season going? And I said, finally, the Lord is starting to show me I need to develop something totally new as we go through and into the gate ahead. And she agreed 100%. She said, the way you helped me operate with Peter's death, she said, I still cry a lot, but it has brought me into a new place. See, and you have to know there's this process of ending and beginning. S seven, see, some of us are still ending, and then we begin, new and fresh. You have to end to begin. Now, that sounds real simple, but some of you need to write it down. I write about some of that. I've got some great books out, out there for you that if you don't have them, I, I try to just get three for 25. That gets you one and a half free. Uh, and, and this is a new one, the Spiritual Warfare Handbook, which is really important this year. And then I like redeeming the time and time to defeat the devil and then of course the series a time to triumph is so important and then i always look uh, this i don't have it in the message let me say it this year is about what trisha said a new song Amen. this year is about a new sound coming forth 
Just like what I said with John. And so you've got to hear the sound that's moving you. Sound creates movement. All right. And so you need to let's say out loud, I'm going beyond my last seven years. Now, eight is linked with something. Eight is a year of energy. It's the right word. Somebody throw their hand up and say, I need this one. Because you have to see the boundaries of your future. That's called portion, means inheritance. And you have to gain momentum to occupy that. So to gain momentum, you have to have energy. And so eight is linked with your being. That's what makes it a very personal year. It is about how your being is going to allow God to energize you so that you advance into the place that he has for you. Some of you said, I am so tired out from last year. That's okay. It's really where you should be. It's okay if you're so weary from the last season because you're at the gate of crossing through into the energy movement of the Spirit of God through you that's going to activate you so you can do what you need to do in the year ahead. It's amazing the way this year works. And, it's, and you say, How, I, I make sure I'm understanding this. See, when we're in God's timing, He's not in time, but we are. So He's moving this grace dimension down in the atmosphere for us. He's loosing this faith toward us, that the faith of God that we can grab hold to. And when we respond by faith, it penetrates through us. And all of a sudden, it doesn't matter how old you are. That's why Joshua and Caleb at 80 could move forward. But you know why? They went through the door. They went through the gate. That's why Moses, Moses didn't have the energy to move by faith, see? So he used an old method when God told him to do something new, speak to the rock. He went back and used what had happened 40 years prior and hit the rock. Well, what happens when you do that, you lose the energy to propel you forward. You use the mantle to propel you forward. And you don't keep moving. Let me explain this because energy comes, spiritual energy comes in a moment. There's a moment of change. Yours might be today. There's a moment where things start shifting to you. And that moment is what creates momentum for your future. See, it doesn't all happen in that moment, but the moment unlocks your future. And so it becomes a physics principle. And where all of a sudden motion starts happening and your body starts moving. Now, I want to say this. That's a word for this particular place. This body will be moving forward in lots of dynamics. And you need this word. M momentum means that this matter, touch yourself, gains, <coughs> is, gains this force that creates... Uh, 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 velocity and in other words all of a sudden you start going at a rate that the enemy can't stop you alright so you suddenly everybody say suddenly you suddenly break through uh, think of an airplane you know because I live on one think of an airplane all of a sudden it gains the right momentum then the law of lift kicks in and you're up here same way it works. And so it's linked with time. 
this whole dynamic. So I decree right now, you will see your moments. You will know your moments. You won't miss your moments. Those moments you'll say, oh, you'll stop and you'll say, I've got this. I'm going to move by faith here. Then all of a sudden, motion starts. And you start moving by the Spirit in a whole new way. I loose this over every one of us right now. Now, here's the thing. The enemy wants to stop your moment. Daniel 7 says he changed. That's why that book, uh, uh, Time to Defeat the Devil, is so good. I didn't even name it that. Charisma named it that. Because the enemy wants to stop your moment, therefore he can halt your momentum. See? If he can stop that moment, or if he can get you bitter, if he can keep you from forgiving, then your momentum stops. See, and you're then captured instead of moving in conflict with him because he knows if you keep moving in conflict with him, you're going to unlock new provision. Therefore, he's got to stump you some way because, see, remember, he was over provision and sound in heaven. Therefore, he tries to operate and cover that in the earth realm. Sound produces movement. And provision causes you to establish what you to keep you moving and establish what you need to establish. So he tries... It's just a smoke screen, people. He has no right to do this unless we give it to him. And that's what Daniel 7 talks about. He he tries to wear down your mind. Now say out loud, but this is a year of new strength and energy. He might have worn you out, but not today. Something shifting today. That thing he tried to wear you out with is going to have to let go of you. He tries to change times and use law to wear you out. And I'm talking about legalistic, pharisaical law to wear you down so you can't accomplish what you're supposed to accomplish. Say, I already see my pot of gold. See, this year is about the rainbow. Let's just get a little uh, out there. You know, we all, they all say there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. There's gold in covenant. And say, I'm going to get in covenant, stay in covenant this year, and then I'll move forward. You, you need to stay in covenant until God shifts you into a new level of covenant. And that's how that works. If you don't, you have problems. Uh, I'm still in a measure of covenant with the Baptist pastor God put me with. I never broke covenant with him, but he doesn't have the same covenantal relationship of influence over my life. Because he himself said, I, I don't know how to help you keep going because you're way out beyond where I am. See, so you have to find those in covenant with that's out there, way out there with you. See? Uh, now, that's how that works as you move forward. Now, now here's another thing about this year ahead in the giving. Let me add to the giving of what Peter was saying because I couldn't wait to give when I got here. This year is about the power of the first. Eight is linked with first. Now, really, it's not one is linked with first, but eight is really linked with first because eight has the energy of producing the first. That's the way you want to see it. So what happens is this year is a new beginning for us. So 
it becomes a first year for us. See, seven is a finishing year. This is a first year, something new. I even look at a couple of my kids who have gone through some tough things. I'm watching them cross over into the new. I can't hold them to things that happened in the past. I'm watching to see how they cross over the new, and I'm seeing them make their shift. See, that's what you have to do. You, you can't hold people captive to the last seven years or the last season. If you do that, they can't make it into the new. See? So don't do that because they're going to go one way or the other this year. Look at somebody and say, everybody's going this year. It's one of those years, people. You either go in that way from the gate. There were two tribes that did that. They went that way from the gate. The other two tribes went this way. Uh, the other ten tribes went this way. See? It, you have to understand we're going. That makes this a first fruits year. Every time you give at first fruits this year, you're unlocking something. You're unlocking something at every first fruits this year. I'm asking the Lord how we're, I've been doing first fruits. God revealed first fruits to me in 1972. I've been doing it that long, but this year, every first fruit, every eight is a first fruit year, and how you move at first fruit, which is Rosh Kadesh, the new moon of beginning. God made it that way. So that we could understand he has cycles of harvest. This Rosh Hashanah is different. This Passover is different. This Pentecost is different. Those are all first fruit gatherings in a first fruit year. Every Rosh Kadesh is important. We're participating in it today. Amen. See, when you gave today, it's not, and you don't have to understand it all. You haven't been in it 50, over 50 years like I have, 55 years. But when you did it today, and gave today, something happened differently than it did last year. All of a sudden, your gate started forming for the future. If you, you refuse to give, it doesn't mean your gate isn't there. It just means you're not going to be able to see it. That's just how it works. And so, this year, see, we're in Tishrei. And we just entered Tishri of 5778. All of a sudden, something happens. New blessings. There's a book out there called Time to... I don't know of any book that's ever... I don't think that book's ever been written other, by, other than by Robert and I. Because I know in Israel, we had to go over certain leaders, with certain leaders, the issue of Rosh Kadesh. Because there's a dynamic that goes on. See, this is how simple it was for me and Pam. We were involved in a big Baptist church. You know, we did communion once every three uh, months. I was on staff there twice, and then I would go do an assignment, boys' country, or take on a real estate. I, I was also president of the largest land investment company in Texas, worked for the oil companies. But in the midst of it... <coughs> In the midst of that, when we moved to Denton for me to work into the Soviet bloc country, we went to a church that was thriving there, and they immediately knew, asked me would I be on leadership and work with them. And Pam said, this feels like the same thing we just came out of. On, you know, she's been a real hard case to deal with through the years. She said, this feels like the same thing we came out of. They just raise their hands and speak in tongues. She said, but it feels the same. I said, well, they want me to be an elder with them as we move forward up here. And so we're walking out, and she looks at one of the head elders, and she said, it appears that we're going to settle down in this land with you, even though I don't think we're supposed to.
I thought, you know what? <laughs> so the next Sunday, watch what the Lord does. I have to go get a Russian font so I can, and this is in 1986, and we were using Russian fonts then to communicate with. And this Russian font is over at this church called Believer's Fellowship with one of the elders there, and I have to go there. I said, well, we'll just go there on Sunday morning. I'll get the font, and then I'll come back, and I'll work this afternoon. And we walk in. It is this little church the size of this section. It has maybe 100 people. Uh, the pastor teacher gets up and says, if you're visiting with us today, we don't meet during the week we just meet on Sunday morning so we're only here one day a week Pam looked at me and she said this is where I'm going <laughs> I said what if this is a cult she said I only have to go once a week <laughs> she is a woman who knows sort of who she is in the Lord and elsewise but then the pastor got up Robert Heidler he wasn't the pastor, he was the teacher. Robert has not got a pastoral bone in his body. He got up and he, he doesn't, not one. He's the best teacher in the entire world, seriously. And uh, I mean, but pastor, no. I'll tell you how bad he is a pastor. I got back one from a trip where I had been to Asia for two weeks, and he walked into my office. He said, I've been praying for you. How was Weatherford? I said, well, that's a town about 30 minutes from us. I said, I'm sure it's fine, but I've been in Asia. <laughs> <laughs> so that just shows you. He's with the Lord. <clears throat> but he gets up and he says, and if you're visiting today also, we do first fruits. And Pam said, I told you this was the right place. We'd been doing first fruits since we met. I had never even been to a church where I heard the word first fruits. And so we just participated with them. And I went up to him and I said, I've been doing first fruits since 1972. He said, Would you come over and tell me what it is? <laughs> He said, I see it in the word, but I don't understand it at all. That's what formed our relationship. It was really amazing. And see, that's what I'm talking about. That's what God will do for you this year. He will start getting you hooked up, aligned, and moving so that you're operating in breakthrough and victory. Now, here's one or two more things. Thanks, Chad, for helping me. I want you to list these things. And then I'm going to share a word. I'm going to prophesy over you. This is a year of Ruth. You want to find where all of these things align biblically in the Word of God. See, Ruth was about... She had to make a choice of alignment. She had to choose to follow. She started off one way. She just, it says, I love, one of my favorite verses is in Ruth chapter 1. It says, when they got to the gates of the city, the city rejoiced. They made it through this gate, and then she starts gleaning and just doing what she's doing. And she does that for a whole year. Because, see, it's Naomi that God's dealing with. Naomi has an inheritance that has to be restored. Now, let me say this. Those people that are 70 plus, you need to be pressing in this year like never before to see all your inheritance that hasn't been restored come into a new place. Who are you going to align with to get it restored? See, this is a business principle too. Uh, <clears throat> then there comes a moment with Naomi. Naomi's sending her out. 
out into the fields to glean. But there comes a moment with Naomi after a year, and she says, honey, this ain't going to get us anywhere from now on. There's a moment. She says, that widow's garment you've got on has got to come off. It will not attract anybody to help us. So she says, you're going to have to get a new garment. We're going to have to change your clothes. We, you're going to have to take a bath and wash off all the sweat of the last season. You're going to have to get a new anointing. Then you're going to have to go down to the threshing floor and, do, and lay down at this man, the richest man's feet. The threshing floor is where they had the parties at. Lay down at this man's feet, and then it's going to unlock our future. Now, just think about Naomi. She's saying, I don't look good enough. I'm too old. I've still got a bunch of bitterness from the past, but we're still shifting. And we're going to shift right now, and I'm going to let go of all that, and you're going to let go of all that. And then this is what happens. You know what Boaz says when he wakes up, and there she is at her feet. You are a woman of valor. Valor is the same word as strength. And he says, there's someone at the gate who has access to you before me. But if he doesn't take that responsibility over you, I'm getting you. In other other words, when you shift it in that moment, you shift it one way or the other. One way or the other, your future now is going to get unlocked. Throw your hand up and say, one way or the other, my future is getting unlocked. It is the best example. Now, I write about that in this book here, and I talk about Boaz only lived about a month, maybe, after they aligned. Long enough for her to get pregnant, for Naomi to get back her whole inheritance, and for Ruth to unlock the future. That's what makes a moment so important. It changes everything in your future. Look at somebody and say, I ain't missing a moment this year. Now this will give you one more example. Let me do one more. Let's do Revelations 12. I, I, I follow it through every book. So I find the moment. This is how I read my Bible every year. I I go find my moment in every one of the books. There's a moment. The whole year is an Isaiah year. So Isaiah, prophesy it. Read it. Prophesy it. I heard it coming forth this morning for you. Here's another issue. Uh, Let me do, let me show you two more and then I'm going to pray over you another one is where all of a sudden the lord comes through the gate of jerusalem he's crucified that is causing a season to shift and he goes in this tomb this barred tomb and what what amazes me is how quickly they forget the prophecies Trauma will make you try to forget the prophecies that are over your life. Remember that. That's why if you don't deal with trauma, trauma puts uh, 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 like a veil over your promise. And so the women go to the tomb and Mary Magdalene, who is really free. I mean, you know, she was a woman, a real woman with a past. But she got freed. She gets there. There at the gate or door of that tomb, there's this angelic force. See, you've got to look where angels align with doors for you. There's going to be certain angelic hosts at the door when you go out. And... Then she's the first to recognize that the Lord has resurrected. Eight is linked with resurrection. So she is the first to recognize that, and he appears to her as a gardener. 
He doesn't appear to her in the normal form. Now, that's a, that's a caution for you in a year of new. It's not going to always come the way you're used to it coming. And all of a sudden, because she knows his voice, that's the key. Faith cometh, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. She knows his voice. She runs back and they are held up in the upper room with the door locked. And they let her in and she tells them, he's alive. And they look at her like she has fallen out of a tree. And don't believe a word she says. So what he does is he comes through the locked door. Here's my word for you. He's going to find a way in this year. <laughs> He's going to find a way in through your fears. He's going to find a way in through your doubts. He's going to find a way in to say, here I am. It's your door. He can go through it no matter what. Then they had to make the choice to go back through. And you know that whole scenario. And then what he did, all of a sudden he shifted them into the new. He blew on them. They shifted from being disciples to apostles. A lot of people don't understand you can't become an apostle without being blown on. You can't shift your identity without being blown on. So she helped unlock this whole new anointing for the future. So that says to us, we need a new anointing to get out the door. Because they had to go back out the door from that point and move through the door of their future. Now here's one more. It's a year of birthing. Eight, there's new birth. Uh, tomorrow we have our 13th grandchild. Uh, yeah, I say the same thing. <laughs> I, I started last week telling Pam how I thought she ought to take a trip at Christmas. Because, you know, they're not going to come over. I'm not going to cook. I don't even know how to cook. They're not going to all pile in over at my house if she's not there. I said, why don't you go to Hawaii for Christmas? Because <laughs> Isaac Celestine goes every other year to see her. Po I said, that way we, the house won't be overrun. I can go see each one of them and eat with them and then move on and do what I want to do. She said, do you wake up every morning with a plan? <laughs> I said, well, I try to. <laughs> now, now, here's the last one. Revelations 12, and I could go through every book of the Bible like this. Every one of them, you're going to find the year embedded in that book. Every, that's why, don't be, listen, you know, don't be like we were when we were bad. I, I thank God I'd read the Bible four times before I became Baptist. I really do because I knew the Spirit. But the Baptists did help people learn to read their Bible. And then you would check it off. You know, you got to stand up sometimes if you read it. That's not the best way to read your Bible. You need to read your Bible in light of the timing that you're living in. Every book, you're going to find this dynamic. Now, Revelation 12 is the place where all of a sudden the church starts having birth pain. And she brings forth the new. It's a three-year process. The next two years... Just like with Yeshua, they had, she had to hide it because it caused the enemy to begin to move. 
Now, this is what I want to say with for, to you. We are entering into two great years of conflict, but it's not conflict from the past. It is the conflict of us seeing the new move of God explode. Amen. Yet we will be cautious coming and going. We are going to be in this age-long warfare with the dragon, with Leviathan, with Jezebel. And all of a sudden, what God's going to do, he's going to show you as the news forming what's trying to stop it in your life. He'll show you in your life, and he'll show you. See, I've not even given this message at my own church. I don't usually do that because I watch where God sends me. Something is huge that's going to be going on up here. Huge. I go from here, I go to Kansas, then I go to Colorado, then I go to Vegas. Something is huge going to be going on in New Jersey, Delaware, Pennsylvania, all of these original colony states. It's huge. It's like this is the choice this year of them allowing the Lord through the gate. And things are going to start moving incredibly. It's amazing. Now, I want you to stand up because I want to prophesy. When we pulled up, we pulled up into a parking spot and we got motion to pull to a new parking spot. And I felt like it was prophetic. I really did. Because it would be just as easy for us to park where we were parked and just walk in. But when you motioned, I felt the Lord said, move into the position that I have for you. Amen. Now, hear what I'm saying to you. This is a prophetic parable. This is how they work. There's a position, you're in one position, Pat, and the Lord says, I'm ready for you to make a shift to another position. It's going to align you with the door. When we moved, we aligned with the door. I mean, all of a sudden, I'm in the spirit. I, I guess that's why I don't drive and I don't cook. <laughs> if I did that, I, we would end up in bad. Uh and so I'm aligned with the door, and I get out, and I take a breath, and the Lord speaks to me personally. He said, there's strength at that door. Amen. I thought, okay. All I have to do is walk through it, and no matter how much I've gone in the last three weeks, I'm going to get new strength. Amen. Now hear me, hear me. And I, I felt it. I felt it. I mean, this is how God works in time and place. I don't know that I, I would have even, that would have even happened had I been at home. See, that's why you have to move with the Lord. There's something for each one of you personally here today. And I said, okay. And then I thought, you know, that's a scripture. There's strength at the gate. If, you, if we'll go through it. So I said, okay, I'm going to go in and I'm going to, I told Tricia, would you find me a place? I've got to look up a scripture that's coming to my mind that I need to look up. And she took me in while y'all were worshiping. Now I want you to go up and recreate that scenario, all of you who are in there worshiping. And we're going to worship for a moment. Because I moved from that to the sound that was coming forth. And I knew I was in the presence of God. And I knew that I was moving into a new place. I felt it. Look at me. I, I feel like I'm energized. I feel like I'm anointed. Uh, and this is what I walked into. So let's worship and feel this anointing coming down on you. And then I'm going to prophesy out of it. Now, 
while they're preparing to get us there, I find the scripture when I walk in there, it's in Isaiah 28. And it's talking about how one glorious beauty is fading and another one is coming. How summer's ending and we're entering into new fruit. And in that day, the Lord of hosts will be a crown of glory. It's the very place we are. Put your head up here and say, I feel my crown. It's okay. He will be a crown of glory for his remnant. And then it says, for a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment and for strength to those who will turn back the battle at the gate. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I brought you through that door of strength so the battle that will already come against you in days ahead, you're going to be able to turn it back. Now I want us to worship this first, then I'll prophesy. Let me say this. And when they were singing that, all of a sudden, here's another portion of the scripture. For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to this people. I want to tell you the gift of tongues and interpretation. I want you to become shrewd. I want you to become gifted in it. Because there's a gift of that here. To him, he said, this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. This is the refreshing. Do not be a people who will not hear, but hear. Now let's sing this as we move forward. This is a personal word for each one of us, as well as a corporate word. The Lord says, uh, watch me position you and align you with your gate ahead. I will take you through and into a new place where strength will come upon you. 
do not kick against the pricks, for I am repositioning my people for the future. I say to you, I will give you your door. Know that it is the door where you will rest. And you say, but Lord, I'm not sure I have the strength to go through a new door. But I say to you, I am already aligning you for the strength. And if you'll go through that gate that I give you, I say to you, you will rest in the new place that I have for you. For this will not be a year like you have seen before. This will be a year of unlocking and doors that were locked will now be unlocked. Trisha, you and Peter, I brought this key. Come, If you'll come and take it. The Lord says, you're unlocking a new door this year. Doors you've never unlocked before. Doors you've never gone through before. This is for all of us. The Lord says, walk through for I am getting you aligned, watch your moment, and know that you will have a strength to step through and establish your place for the future. I receive it. I receive it. A portal of breakthrough. A portal of breakthrough. I receive it. A portal of breakthrough. Go ahead, Charles. I'm sorry. I noticed something when Chuck was ministering to us this morning. He has a, a symbol for the year on his on his neck. The symbol is the the head do, uh, symbol of uh, Hebraic symbol, and it has an a angel at the gate at the head symbol right in the middle of it but the whole time he was ministering it was turned the other way <laughs> meaning that the way it looks when you're on the other side of the door there's a there's an angel that's behind you securing your future so whatever you've been through whatever has made you weary whatever's brought you down know that there's an angel at the gate and it can't go with you to the new season. So receive new energy today. Receive and arise this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. said it, I believe Forever faith, he said it, I believe He said he's forever true. He said it, I believe it. He said he can move mountains. He can move mountains. He can move my mountain. He can move your mountain too. He Forever. He said he's forever made. 